here is an interesting story. If you were to believe the government-funded wowsers, and there are a few of them, who campaign constantly against the evils of alcohol in this country, and I'd include amongst them people like Guy and Espiner, Helen Clark, they're all wowsers. Oh, too much booze advertising, too much alcohol, it's terrible, it's destroying society. Paddy Gower going around saying, I've given up booze, but I'm still on the dope and the weed and everything else. Um, gosh, you'd think that this country was awash in alcohol and it was like the Tower of Babel and something must be done. Um, as someone who believes in individual choice and thought, and if something's legal, you can do it. Um, and, and you're responsible for yourself. I've always found it a bit odd, a bit virtue signalling. But here's the interesting point. New statistics out from Stats New Zealand, the people who want you to identify your gender, the number of standard drinks per person per day in New Zealand has fallen by 1% to 1.96. It's the lowest number of alcohol consumption on average in New Zealand in the past 15 years. The volume of beer, wine and spirits available available for consumption shows that the total annual volume has declined by 0.3% to 498 million litres. Let's round it up to 500 million litres of booze a year. But we're drinking less. Less is available. At a time, one could say, where we're more liberal in our advertising and availability of alcohol than ever before. So how does this mix with nation awash in booze narrative from the government-funded wowsers? Well, to ask this, answer that question and talk about these figures, um, when joined by the New Zealand Alcoholic Beverages Council's Chief Executive, Virginia Nichols, who, of course, uh, her organisation, and she are uh, interested in such things. Uh, Virginia, welcome to the programme. Nice to have, have you with us. Oh. Thank you very much. Good to be here. All right. I just want to clarify, these aren't your stats. These are stats. No, they're not. Stats. No. So, these so, are stats, New Zealand stats. Yeah. And there's other stats as well. Like oh, give them to New me. New Zealand stats as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So these are ones from November of last year. And that it talks about 81% of New Zealand adults, or four out of five of us, are drinking beer, wine and spirits responsibly. And that's a decrease of about 2% in the past five years. And on top of that... We're so actual, the number of people who drink has declined by 2%? Uh, the number... Yes, that's... No, yeah. no, the number of people that are responsibly drinking uh, have increased, which is good, yeah. and those who are hazardously drinking has decreased. Wow. Yeah, and just one other stat, Sean, I don't want to don't want to sort of do too many, but I think it's another important one. Since the late 1970s, we're drinking more than 25% less than we used to. So it's all good indicators as so to what we're doing. So every trend as to social harm under the current setting suggests we're moving in the right direction. I think we are moving in the right direction. We've still got a way to go, and we acknowledge that. Yeah. Um. Let's compare like the last 15 years about these stats about how much we're drinking. In yeah. what environment as regards alcohol availability and advertising restriction um, has much happened in the last 15 years to liberalise or extend the availability of alcohol and advertising or has it remained, has it, has it flatlined? No, it hasn't. It's never, there's no relationship. Like, I've seen the data, it's 18 Nielsen data of how much industry is spending on their advertising and how much we're drinking. There is no relationship at all to what we're spending on advertising and how we drink. Um, we're, either way, you just, you know, some years there's been ex significant expenditure on advertising and frankly the drinking level has gone down. So there really is no relationship. Okay, so, but we, you, you know you're still going to get the Wales as the Health Alcohol Watch Council or Alcohol health watch or whatever they call themselves they're still going to say it costs us billions in the year from drinking and we shouldn't drink and we need to close bars and restrict hours and have no advertising and go the way of tobacco and have like the brown paper wrapping i mean that's really what they're after um yeah it, yeah it seems to be sean but i i think we have to go back and say 81 percent of us and I know it's the same skirt again, but we're drinking just fine. Four out of five of us are. We really need to concentrate on those who are drinking hazardously. 
Um, and But another thing I'd like to point out as well is we need to be doing more, I think, at the top of the cliff rather than at the bottom. Mm. And so we're, the industry itself is involved in a um, program in schools called Smashed, and that goes out to 12 and 13-year-olds. It's not done by the industry. We, we fund it, absolutely. It's done by the Life Education Trust. And it's a theatrical performance. And so the students themselves get to be involved in the performance, to be making the decisions. And I guess all those questions about, you know, please don't drink until you're at least 18 years old. Delay that first drink, you know. But how that is happening, my, I understand. You know, people are, young people are drinking yeah. less, drinking later, binge yeah. drinking less. Yes, that's correct. Yes, so all those indicators are great. But I think we still need to do more at the beginning, if you like, at a 12 and 13-year-old age than when somebody actually has, you know, a hazardous drinking problem. We still need to do stuff there, but I'd love to front-load it more. Yeah. Hey, hey, Virginia, the other thing is you represent, like, the companies that make money out of selling booze. Surely they read these stats and they go, oh, my God, we're going to go out of business. No, the, that, that, is, that is a false assumption, really. The industry very much supports responsible drinking. They are not interested at all in hazardous drinking. I mean, what's happening out there at the moment, too, is there's, we're, a lot of people, not all people, but a lot of people are actually drinking more, you know, sort of premium-type drinks. So they yeah. might say, right, I, and premium means different things for different people. It might be a really good craft beer. It might be a really nice glass of wine, whatever it is. And they're enjoying it. Yeah. And so that's... And I, I must admit, I'm thinking there. about that in context. Uh, I'm probably smoking cigarettes less. Um, I'm certainly drinking less, but when I do drink, you know what I do? I get a Cuban cigar, I get some fine yes. whiskey, and I sit down and I Denny Crane it. You know, it's Boston Legal. Oh, and, and that's absolutely. a beautiful experience, and it's quite different. Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. But I think, too, we don't just look at our lives around what we're doing with beer, wine and spirits. I mean, it's all about, you know, moderation. It's all about thinking about our diet, doing a little bit of exercise. I mean, there's much more um, to life than just beer, wine and spirits. But, of course, when we do have them, it's great. And, of course, there's wonderful options out there now with the no and low alcohols as well. Yeah. The industry has been doing a huge amount in product development of this over the last sort of 10 years, and the products that are out there are superb. And I see a lot of people when I'm out and about, and they are looking and they're counting their drinks, and they're saying, right, I now need to flip to a no or low alcohol product. And I yeah. think that's a really good thing to do. Yeah. But do you think, Sean, should I just mention about standard drinks? I have to admit, before yeah. I had this role, I wasn't sort of greatly sure about it myself. And obviously, now I certainly am. But, but again, this is Health New Zealand's recommendation um, for sort of low risk. is no more than 15 standard drinks a week for a male and no more than 10 for a woman. And, and have at least two days off a week. So I think that's a really good thing to know about as well. Yeah, jeez. I'm well within the safety zone on this now. Yeah. Hey, Virginia, yeah. look, the other thing you know, no matter what the stats are, what everyone says, the wows is going to keep coming. Yes, absolutely. But equally, I think that there's a few few voices out there saying, hey, you know, just leave us alone. We we drink responsibly. We enjoy having a drink. And why, and why shouldn't we, really? Yeah. All right, uh, Virginia, I thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's uh, Virginia right. Nichols. CEO of the Alcoholic Beverages Council, which is basically the umbrella lobby representative group for the booze industry. Um, and though Helen Clark and, and, and Guy and Espiner and, and Paddy Gower and all the other wowsers won't tell you, all the trends on alcohol consumption in New Zealand are going in a positive direction in terms of public health and expenditure. But they still want to scare you with lies. Uh, whoever's going on about Bomber having a go at me last night, can I assure you... The Department of Conservation is not Bomber, it looks like him, but it's just some guy that used to clean the toilets on the night shift at um, ZB in Christchurch. His name's Pat someone, and he's an idiot, and he seems to be slightly weirdly obsessed with me. Um, so there we go. Sean, we're drinking more here in Hawke's Bay, dealing with this disaster. Sean, Stats New Zealand have doubled up or doubled down and sent two forms with different codes to our household our second one arrived yesterday. That's great, Paul. You'll get over-represented in the census. Um, look, the road workers, firearms, I'm going to be honest, I do not have the resource 
and I cannot give an accurate read on what has happened crime-wise in Hawke's Bay. I don't know that anyone can. And I understand how you are fearful and communities cut off and traumatised are fearful about their safety. But I also understand the danger of rumour and innuendo. And I also hate to say I think there are many people who would pay, play politics with this disaster and use it as an opportunity to get at the police or get at the incumbent government. So I've made the decision, happy to take people firsthand who say they've been the victims of crime, happy to report what is reported, but I'm being very careful about reporting rumour or innuendo about a crime wave. Um, and I'm not discounting people, but I'm hearing a lot of stories that are like vaccine injuries a friend of a friend's cousin, or I heard the other day in the pub or down the road, and I'm sorry, my journalistic ethic doesn't let me report that as fact. Um, so I'm just treading cautiously there. Um, no, I'm not taking any text on James Bond. We're going to go full James Bond, full Casino Royale tomorrow. Ben, have you got a tuxedo? Could you wear a tuxedo tomorrow? Oh, I'd love to wear a tuxedo. Ruby we should cocktail we should dress. We'll tomorrow. just do a Bond show tomorrow. How cool is James Bond? Good idea. Well, maybe do it I'll, Friday. I'll be the Pierce Brosnan uh, version, though. That's my favourite. <sighs> Pierce Brosnan. He was such a wimp. Oh, I, I just couldn't stop Pierce seeing Brosnan Remington now? Steel, which was just this percent television program. I never liked him. He was too. I mean, Connery's the original. You're going to admit that Connery's yeah, the greatest but Bond. To move on from that now. I think Lazenby is, was, was under Lazenby. The one uh, was underrated. Yeah, and I've like got to say, films, didn't he? I've got to say, I love Daniel Craig in the end, even though clearly he he shaved his body hair. He grew on me. Which uh, the real James Bond would never have shaved his body hair. That thing where he comes out. Well, he needs to be aerodynamic and he was for his job. Uh, he was blonde. So in the end, I loved Daniel Craig. Yeah, he did. He did and who's me next? It better not be a chick. Hey, Pierce Brosnan is the only James Bond that's done James Bond and an ABBA show. Mamma Mia, that is that's versatility right there. <laughs> so, so you're not kind of, you notice no one mentions Roger Moore. Yeah, because he was a wimp. He was a wimp. He was yeah, a proper wimp. He was pretty. He was pretty bad. I would agree. Anyway, look, we're going to talk about Bond tomorrow, not today. Though I can see it's going to be a fun show when we get into that tomorrow.